OK. So what's the average rate of change of a function? You can't just use the phrase average rate of change if you don't discuss from where to where, so from A to B. So if I have a function that starts at x equals A and ends at x equals B, and it does something or other, this point here is at B comma F of B. This point here is at A comma F of A. And if I compute f of b minus f of a over b minus a, that is called the average rate of change of a function. And notice that this is a delta y over delta x. This is a slope. It's a slope of the line connecting these two points. So the slope of that line is the average rate of change. And there will be some nicer pictures in just a minute. Okay. So can we compute the average rate of change from 0 to 1, from 1 to 2, from 0 to 2? Every time you change where you're looking, you could possibly be changing your average rate of change. Okay, so remember, we're fundamentally computing f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So compute this for these three examples using the points that are labeled on the graph. And I'll pause, and then we'll double check. OK, so let's keep going. If I'm just using 0 to 1, I'm going to compute the slope of the line connecting these two points which I compute as f of 1 minus f of 0 over 1 minus 0. f of 1 is 2. That's given to us right here. f of 0 is 1. That's given to us right here. So I make those replacements. And we get 1 over 1, which is 1. The average rate of change is 1. For part b, we're looking at the slope of the line connecting these two points. And we're going to use f of 1 is 2, but f of 2 is 5. So if I replace f of 2 is 5 and f of 1 is 2, over b minus a, that's 2 minus 1, we get 3 over 1 or 3. The slope of that line, or the average rate of change of the function, is 3. And finally, if I go from 0 all the way to 2, this point here is no longer relevant. I'm just using these two points. So f of 2 is 5, f of 0 is 1, over 2 minus 0, 4 over 2 or 2. The average rate of change is 2. So by changing the interval that you're looking at, you can change the average value of the function. And the average rate of change of the function is the slope of that line connecting those points. That's all this is saying. Okay. So let me go back. I'm just going to redraw that picture. If I have a function that goes from a to f of a, and down here maybe is b, f of b, and the function does who knows what, something like this, great. If I draw the line connecting these two points, the slope of this line would be f of b minus f of a over b minus a, and that's exactly the average rate of change. So the average rate of change of a function on an interval is the slope of the line connecting the endpoints of that interval. All right, so an example. Uh, suppose that g of x is x squared minus 3x plus 2. Find the average rate of change from 1 to 3. Find an equation of the secant line containing those points and then graph all of this. So to find the average rate of change, go ahead and do it. Did you do it? All right. g of 3 minus g of 1 over 3 minus 1. Well, if you compute g of 3, you should get 2. If you compute g of 1, you should get 0. 2 minus 0 over 2 is just 1. So the average rate of change is 1. OK, that tells us the slope of the secant line is 1. And here is two different points containing, sorry, two different points on that line, and we computed the slope. So can you find the equation of a line given some points on the line, and we also know its slope already? Can you use point-slope form? So I'll pause. This was back in chapter one, point-slope form. We know the slope, and we know some points. All right, so we use point slope form, and we just plug in. Either point works. The book just happened to use this one, I guess, because it's first. It doesn't actually matter. You'll get the same answer no matter what. Okay. If we had used the other point, we would say y minus 2 is equal to 1 times x minus 3. y minus 2 is equal to x minus 3. Add 2 to both sides and get y is equal to x minus 1. It's the same line. So once you have the slope, it doesn't matter which point you use. You should end up with the same answer. Okay. And here's a graph of that function. 
it's a nice little parabola, and those are the two points that we were connecting. And there's the line x minus 1. It indeed connects those two points. All right, so that's it for section 2.3. We learned about even and odd functions, increasing, decreasing, maxima, minima, finding maxes and mins using calculators, and computing average rates of change.